celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Christian Legal Society with Lakita Biddle. So excited to uh, have you guys join us this morning. Good morning in Virginia. Good morning. You're close. You're close. We're actually in, I'm actually in, in Maryland, but our office is in Virginia. <laughs> That's right. You're like three states that are cousins there. They're like, you know, you can hop, skip, and a jump pretty much. Exactly. Oh, They're all next to each other. Yeah. Super excited that people are joining us again for episode number nine on Overcomers TV. And um, we rebroadcast these shows on Saturdays, 2.30 Eastern. You can also go to Google, Spotify, uh, Apple, iPod, podcast platforms, and put in Christian Legal Society Overcomers TV and follow our show. And uh, what I love about our program is we talk Bible. I know a lot of people don't know that Christian lawyers, there's such a thing, but there's a lot of folks that have been raised up like Esther, like Lakita here, for such a time as this to help people with their legal services and are not in it for the money. A lot of people who are in ministry are overworked, underpaid, right? So you yeah, want to back on that. That's you, Pastor Chuck, overworked, underpaid. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's been some people, especially in media, like uh, evangelists that have made a lot of money on TV. You know, Joel Osteen made millions on his book. Granted, he was a book writer. Anybody else wrote a book on recipes and made a million dollars, it wouldn't give him a hard time. But because it deals with spiritual things in the gospel, they give him such a hard time. But, you know, you write a good book and you sell books or artists makes paintings or record artists records music and they are successful. You know, there's a whole lot in Proverbs about working hard, being diligent. There's prosperity in that versus the lazy person who doesn't work and how that leads to poverty. So that's a big issue here. And again, you got to be non-judgmental when you're working with people in poverty. But sometimes there's a lack of work ethic and all that kind of stuff. So even while you're working with them, you're encouraging them through life skills. You want to touch on that? Yeah, I think it's um, I think people think that because you are a believer uh, that you don't get to you you shouldn't be making money. You should be out here um, in this impoverished mentality. But that's not right. You know, like we serve a God who has thousands of cattle and thousands of mansions and, you know, and it's, he, he owns the whole world. He created the world, as a matter of fact, and he gives us the ability to create wealth. And we have to really break that mindset of of poverty. And so I think it's important, you know, for people to have the skill sets they need to be able to be successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's good. Yeah. yeah you need a lot of work to become a lawyer and Christian legal org is the website for those that are listening on the podcast. You can also call 703-642-1070. We'll uh, voice that <clears throat> info a little later on in the show as well. And um, yeah, that's true. And uh, we also talk about the Bible. So the last couple of times we brought up the verse of the day. Haven't looked at it yet, but it's Second uh, Thessalonians 1, 3. And I shall make a big screen for our viewers. Oh, you got a verse of the day up here. Yeah. Yeah. Second so look, we use Bible Gateway because as we talk, we bring up verses. And it's always good to show people the verses. But we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of everyone of you all abounds towards each other. That'll preach. Go, girl. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Um, I got to meditate that on that a little bit. You know, the love towards one another. We were, I was just at a retreat this past weekend. Uh, we have a, retreats for our Christian attorneys and law students to be able to spend time with one another. And the theme was unity. Mm -hmm. Unity, like loving one another. And we were coming out of Ephesians 4. Um, and so, man, it's the only way we can walk in unity is to walk in love and really understand our brothers and our sisters. And um, it doesn't mean that we have to all be alike. It doesn't mean that we all have to think alike. We all have to all act alike, but we do have to learn to love one another. You think about the love scriptures in Corinthians and you're just like, I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. 
<laughs> well, you know, add this concept to a courtroom situation. Can you think of any judicial situation where people just aren't mad because of the injustice? The last thing they're thinking about is being loving. And Jesus said, love your enemy. Bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Those are the people that are on the other side of the of the issue in a courtroom or a legal battle, right? That's so difficult, though. Like when you see you when you see the person that's on the other side, and you don't think about it as like, okay, we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. We're wrestling with spirits here, and you you're just like, ah, oh, I don't quite love that other person. You know, every law situation is very contentious for the most part. I mean, there's not too many situations that I can think of that's not opposing parties. And it is difficult to love the other person on the other side for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So even as attorneys, we not e we're not even parties to the cases and we, <laughs> like, Ooh, I don't know if I love that other attorney right now. Well, there is that con competitive spirit. So whether it's basketball, football, or the court of law, you want to win. Everybody wants to win and everybody thinks they're right. And you know what? A lot of people are right in the room. Uh -huh. They got some points that they're justified and they're trying to make their point. And then the other person has his points. And that's the, the job of the judge is one to apply the law and figure out, you know, and then there's mediation, right? Mediators, Jesus uh -huh. is our advocate, a one mediator with the Father. Talk about the art of mediating, maybe as a Christian attorney. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one art that I have not yet gotten down packed. The last magazine um, that I did was on Christian conciliation, which is basically like a form of mediation. And I learned so much in working with um, the authors in the magazine about conciliation and mediation and why it's important to have things from a God's perspective and try to figure out how to come to make peace with other people. Um, I'm a litigator, not a mediator. <laughs> so I really, um, but you know, God is a mediator and that's his whole judicial concept, I guess you would say, because everything is about mediation, right? That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ to, you know, mm -hmm. as our mediator to, to be in the middle of us, our intercessor. So Christian conciliation is a ministry that spun off from Christian legal society many years ago. Um, if you look in our magazine, you'll see the history of it um, and you'll see how different um, conciliation ministries have come forth out of Christian legal society. They're all across the globe. Um, RW360 is one of them. The Institute for Christian Conciliation is another one. Um, there's so many peacemakers, ministries, another one. There's so many different ones. They're out here. If you're looking for Christian lawyers to um, intervene in the work or to assist, right? There's churches that have issues with their congregants between the pastors, leadership. Oh, no, that doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> that's where, that's, it's cray cray in the church. You know, we think it's a bunch of perfect people, but we've got some issues. Yes, we do have issues. We are very imperfect. Uh, so yeah. But we're in the right place. I always encourage them. We're in the right place. This is where we're gonna grow. Yes. So we're going to hear from God, the inner presence of God. And I always just want to add here, too, a lot of people always quote the verse when we start to pray, right? Where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. Well, he's also in the midst when you're by yourself. But when he <laughs> said that, I got to show, I got, this was just pointed out. That I've been hearing it for like 30 years. And just last year, I heard a preacher point it out. So let's go to the Bible. And it's in Matthew 18. So that's what I love about hang, having you on the show. We do a Bible studies and get in the word. Yes. So in the Matthew, word. Matthew 5, 18, he says, when a brother sins against you, again, that doesn't happen to a lot of people. Most people don't ever have anybody sin against them. That's rare. But if <laughs> I got a lot of sarcasm, <laughs> morning, sorry, more, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go to him, tell him his fault between you and him alone first. So before you call the lawyer, you got to go to that person one on one. And most people have done that. And if he's if he doesn't hear, take another one or two more that the by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word be established. So they're there just to witness, not to gang up on them. That's important. Verse 17. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church or in this case, a governing body like the court uh -huh. of law. Right? Uh -huh. But this is to Christians. But we can use that for the governing law, like take them to court in this case. But he even Paul even says, we'll, we'll talk about that next. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be like you to a heathen or a tax collector, right? And mm -hmm. this is where 
<clears throat> binding and loosing Pentecostals go crazy with this. They think they can bind and loose demons, but you can't. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So this is church discipline. This is where they kick them out. If they don't hear the church, you're excommunicated. And that's where he says you decide as a church whether you discipline or not to discipline. What you know, what you agree upon. And this is where he says, again, I say to you, if two or three, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything now to be done by Father in heaven, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. And this pastor says, never is more God in the midst than when he's trying to reconcile people. Yeah, that's true. That because that's the heart of God, reconciliation. You're, you're it saying. is. And and there's another scripture that says we all have the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And so it is the heart of God that we be reconciled with our, our brothers. It's Pastor Chuck, you all in my stuff this morning because me and my real brother, my biological brother, <laughs> woo, we had a hey, moment this morning. Of the show. Keeping it real. Oh my God. Me and my brother had a real moment this morning. I was just like, ah. And he was like, ah, and I was like, oh, my God, my my mom put him up to it. I know she did. She told my brother to call me because I had to give her an earful about my brother last night. <laughs> me and my brother had to reconcile this morning. We had to get it together. We had it. My real brother, not no brother in Christ, my brother. Right. Yeah, the blood brother, real brother, brother from the same mother. Right. My yeah. brother from the same mother. I love him dearly. We're so much alike, yet so very different. Um, but yes, the Lord wants us to be reconciled with our brothers and, um, even in the body of Christ. Now we're coming back, coming back. <laughs> we're getting off of me. We're coming back. So even well, in the body of Christ, with the real. reconciliation, I mean, it's it's the testimonies, go ahead. We're living it out. Yeah. Oh my God. We got to live this out for real, for real. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm not there yet. So anyway, <laughs> um, even within the body of Christ, like one thing I really like about, uh, Christian Legal Society and the Christian Conciliation Ministries is that it really is a Christ-like way of thinking about things using the methods in which um, I had the beauty of being able to go to um, to Ken Sandy's meeting on peacemaking and yeah, Christian yeah. conciliation. Yeah. And it is, it's different. It's a different way of thinking. It's not your normal Let's kind of duke it out. I want to say what I want to say. You want to say what you want to say. It really is trying to find the heart of God as to um, coming together and making peace, right? Coming together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And one of the things that we try to encourage uh, all Christian organizations as attorneys, put a conciliation um, clause in your contracts, right? Like if you are entering into something uh, from a business perspective or from a church perspective, um, making sure that there's, you know how like secular contracts have arbitration and mediation and we're going to choose this court. That's what we try to make sure that we, um, that we do or recommend. And so Christian conciliation really is a different way of thinking, but bringing, um, bringing us all back to the love scripture that you talked about earlier, but just really, really loving, which is difficult, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. We know the whole scripture, but God, when we have to walk it out. Right. And it says God is love, right? There's a verse that says God is love. So wherever you see that word love, God is patient. God is kind. God is long suffering. God doesn't rejoice in the evil, but rejoices in the truth. God, God, God. And I, the word Christian means like Christ. And we right. believe this is God with skin on. That's why he lived a perfect life. You know, immaculate conception. We could talk about the deity of Jesus all day long, but he was, he was, that's what Christian means is to be Christ-like, to be like Jesus, the WWJD braces. What would Jesus do? And before we move on and before I forget, I want to bring that up, that all these magazines are archived on your website, which is cool too. Another good reason to go to ChristianLegalSociety.org and just to back up, if you go under resources on the top there, um, there's resources. And then under resources, we've got magazines, journal, podcast, media library, Christian mediation, haha, <laughs> events, right? So under magazines, boom, there's all your magazines. And that's just super cool that you can, um, you know. Yeah, it's there yeah, as yeah. a resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, resources are great. There's a whole lot of people. And that's what I love about this tools and technology. You know, somebody's in the room, they heard a sermon or they heard the 
the argument and the court case. And unless they go back and read the transcripts, it's in the air and it's gone. But we can record this stuff. People at a later date can go back, listen in, learn, glean. We're all learning from each other, the good, bad, yeah. and the ugly. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So back to that ministry reconciliation. I'm glad you brought that verse up. So that's Second Corinthians 5. It starts talking about in the beginning that we know that at this earthly house, our tent, is destroyed. In other words, when we die, we have a building for God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. We all desire to, we can't wait to get to heaven and get rid of this bag of bones, right? And we are confident knowing that while we're at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord, verse 6. Another one, we walk by faith, not by sight. Another famous verse, verse 7. Confident, well pleased, I'd rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For a Christian, we can't wait to see Jesus. I can only imagine that whole song. Gets into the judgment seat. And then this is where Paul turns a corner. He's trying to encourage everyone to be reconciled to God because sin has separated us from this God. Um, when If I stole your purse, we'd have a relationship issue. You wouldn't talk to me until I said I was sorry and I returned your purse, right? Same thing. Yep. Sin against yep. God, you know. So the love of Christ compels us because we judge if one died, died for all. We should no longer live. And this is where we're coming. Therefore, we now regard no one according to the flesh, even though we are known in Christ uh, to the flesh. Yet now we know him. And there, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. This is good news. All things have passed away. Behold, all things come new. Now all things are God. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that yeah. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. In other words, not, not holding them guilty as charged with a consequence, right? Jesus paid that. This will preach. So uh, committing to us the word of reconciliation. That's exactly what you're talking about. So like verse 18 and 19 is that whole ministry of reconciliation. I thought I had it on the big screen. I'll throw it up there for a minute. Sorry. Sometimes I got to do that before I go to another page and start going through the Bible. But you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I was thinking about when you said, um, you know, how we are all to be Christ-like and how being Christian means being Christ-like, right? right? And it's tough because you're just like, I'm not the savior. But think about how even those who persecuted him, killed him, crucified him, they all were a part of the reconciliation. Like they were a part of what he came to die for. And it's kind of like, well, when people, you know, do you wrong, like in the legal system, when someone does another person wrong, it's very difficult to be like, oh, I forgive them or I reconcile with them or I'm going to, you know, understand from their viewpoint, right? Like the whole purpose of reconciliation is the process of becoming one again or a way to make things compatible. And so here it's talking about like, you know, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation, meaning that if he can do it, we can do it also. Um, and that we should be doing what he's doing. And God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. There's a lot that's going on in this world right now. And it's super um, important that we remember the ministry of reconciliation because there's so much going on. And you just feel like, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. Um, but the but only way to and God has committed to us, he's committed to us the word a reconciliation. So that's a ministry. He's mm -hmm. committing, he's giving you something to do here. The word, and it takes some words to help yeah. reconcile some people. That's why he preaches. He reasons with you. Hey, you got to go, got to go vertical. Tell God, you're sorry. Ask him into your life. He'll forgive you your sins. He'll walk with you, but you got to go talk to God. Just like if, you know, you and your boyfriend got in an argument and you're telling me about it. I'm like, well, listen, go, just go tell him you're sorry. I'm not mm -hmm. ready for that yet, but I'm encouraging you to go to him and yeah, had that conversation. Pastor Chuck, you don't got people out here thinking I got a boyfriend. So go ahead and speak it. Go ahead and speak it. <laughs> but it's true though. On Bam, there's no way she's available. No, she's available. God's getting him ready. I told you this in the previous uh, off-air episodes. God's getting him ready. That's true. Uh, no, I understood the hypo. I just wanted to make sure. I understood the hypo. I want to make sure there wasn't no confusion. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the word of lack of confusion. That's another word. Make sure there's no confusion. <laughs> no, no, you're right though. You have to go make it right with that person. And I think the um the one beautiful thing about being a Christian a, a lawyer is that we have the ability to understand the ministry of reconciliation and bring that into our cases, right? It's not the same thing as someone who doesn't believe in Christ. They're going to be like, oh, go for tooth and blood. Like, you know, they're just going to be like, go for it all. And you're like, no, we need to reconcile because these kids are at risk in this divorce or, you know, this congregation is going to get hurt in this church split. Whatever the situation is, we can understand it from more of a Christ-like perspective. So that was good. I like that. Amen. So I want to, we had about eight minutes left. A couple things we want to talk about. Next week, we're heading to NRB Nashville. So under overcomers.tv, if you look under our shows, you can see the Christian Legal Society. You can see this episode will be there when we're done, as well as all of our previous episodes, some of our one-on-one -on -one testimonies. And uh, uh, Annie is now, instead of a Bennett, she's uh, married. So I think it's another B. I forget. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So anyway, uh, under our shows, we got uh, a new show that we added called um, Servant Leadership, Christians in Politics. So a lot of people think we can't mix Christianity and politics. We did our first show last Friday. Oh, wow. Christians need to engage because laws are made by legislators, politi politics, Congress, senators, people who are serving our community, yes. serve leadership based on john 14 sorry john 13 where jesus washed feet the lowest job in the house washing people's feet when they walked in that was worse than taking out the garbage and he being lord and teacher washed their feet right so talk about servant leadership you know that is so good we were talking about this i guess the other day we were talking about the fact that we jesus came to serve and not be served yeah. And sometimes the more we elevate, the more we real we have this entitlement of uh, to be served. And really, it's very a humbling experience. But as a lawyer, you have to serve like that's the whole point of it. Right. And so anybody that's in leadership, especially our elected officials, you're there to serve those who elected you to serve your community, to serve. And when we do that, when we walk um, in the spirit of servanthood. Our servitude, yeah. I don't like that word, but we'll, we'll use that one. <laughs> <laughs> servitude, I don't know if I like that. Um, but it's, <laughs> when, we, when we do that, we are saying like, um, you know, I'm doing this to even like the least of these. And, and really like with the politics, um, I like that you're doing that because with the election season coming up, primaries and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, election stuff that's about to happen you see that people get in these places and they forget what they were called to do right you're walking in leadership the beautiful thing about having a law degree is even though you have what a lot of the world probably doesn't have and you have the ability to now serve in a different capacity to yeah. be able to interpret laws create laws um and execute laws that are in the best benefit for the good of the whole. And you can't forget that. That's the whole That's the whole issue with a lot of people when they get on Capitol Hill, which is your picture right there. So we're just gonna go with that. Right, yeah. They forget that they're called to serve the, peop the very people that elected them there. Right. The most beautiful thing about living in Washington DC, and I was talking about this to my brother, is the access to government and being able to just see the people that you've elected to serve in leadership. Mm -hmm. And really, it, it kind of seems like it's a little ironic because you're serving, but the only way you can lead is by serving, right? By showing and demonstrating what a leader should be doing. Right. Um, and so, yeah, That's I, good. I like that. That's a great concept. And, you know, I, I grew up here in, you know, don't talk about politics. Don't talk about religion because you might offend somebody. You might lose some friends. There might be a fight. There might be an argument. So for the sake yeah. of keeping peace, I believe that's exactly what the Satan would want you to do. Don't talk yeah. about politics. Don't talk about religion. And I say, well, Jesus is king, capital K of little K kings. He's Lord, big L Lord over little L Lords, which just means bosses or, you know, uh, king yeah. of kings, Lord of Lords. That covers both. So yeah. he's over all that. And there's two takeaways from Top Gun, and I've been saying this for the last few weeks. First one is, never leave your wingman, Maverick. 
right? And Jesus <laughs> sends them out two by two, right? That would be a wingman, right? Don't leave your yeah. wingman. They, they provide cover to each other. The second takeaway was at the end of the movie, after Goose dies and he's trying to get back in there, engage, Maverick, engage. He goes, I'll engage when I'm ready. You know, <laughs> and Christians need to engage. You may not be a politician, but we need to know what the issues are and we have to do our part and vote. You have to engage. You don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to fight and lose friends and unfriend and be nasty. But there's a way to be salt and light in politics. You want to pick it up from there? We yeah, there is. There's there. definitely a way to be salt and light in politics. And I don't think we should um, resist the the um, the unction to engage. Right. Like we really do need to engage. Like this is the world that we live in. And um to be salt and light, you 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 got to have a little sting, right? As salt, like that's the whole point. It's going to bring healing, but it's going to sting a little bit. And you can't run from those things. And the moment that we think that we should run from those things, it's problematic. Like, um, just I feel like a lot of times if we have godly people in the seven mountains, right? We have them on the different areas, politics, right? Education family, we have them in the different areas that we can demonstrate. Media is one of them. We're using it right here, media. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we just, at the, in our retreat this week, they talked about those seven areas of those mountains of influence. It's funny you're bringing that up. Yes. You know, that's the spirit, girl. The Holy Spirit is like dropping all kinds of the same stuff on us. We don't Holy even spirit. rehearse or, or plan for these shows, I might add. <laughs> We just be in the spirit, like we're spirit. We just connect. I forgot you went on that retreat. Happy birthday, by the way. I forgot Thank about that. Very much. Yeah, it's all good. Thank you very much. 56. 56. 55 is still kind of cool. 56 is coming up on 60, but <laughs> whatever. I'm, uh, I feel good. So praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay. But no, I'm, I definitely um, agree with you that we are to be salt and light. And I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about you being able to bring in uh, different perspectives like this servant leadership with the politics. And I'm hoping and praying that different people will get on those seven mountains in the body of Christ um, and be able to advance God's kingdom. And that's really the key, right? What are we doing to advance God's kingdom? Righteousness, peace and joy. What are we doing to pray for those that are in authority that we might live a peaceable life? There's not peace all the time in this these United States that are very divided. But <laughs> that's a verse to pursue peace with all men. And when it's with as much as it's reasonable to you, yep. you know, it's your job. To, I mean, sometimes engaging can pick up the fight right where it left off and escalate even more. So there's some times where you got to chill and take, you know, back up a little bit is a right time and a place for everything. Last thing I want to jump on before we jump go is next week, that NRB conference that we, you guys are going to, mm -hmm. so uh, you and David. Um, so we have booth 511 and um, uh, Mike Lindell helped cover the cost of the booth and the rooms for our team to be there at the Opryland Gaylord Convention Center. He's a big supporter of Overcomers TV last year at NRB 2023. Um, mm -hmm. was in Orlando. This The even years are in Nashville, but we normally do about, that's my wife, Annette, and I. Uh, Yay! We did a bunch of interviews there. She can't make it this year, but usually we talk to people that are sharing the gospel, making disciples. We do about 20, 25 interviews. There's like three days from 10 to 4, so every half an hour we got another interview. Frank Speech, uh, the voice of free speech, this whole cancel culture issue. We can talk about that a bit. But just talk about maybe what you're expecting to see a little bit at NRB with you and David. Yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's going to be great, first of all, to meet you in person and to be able to um, interact with those who are impacting um, the gospel through media. And I think that's really, really exciting to just have everyone in the same room, um, which, like you said earlier, this is one of the seven mountains, right? Media. Um, and so I, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to opportunity for uh, people to, to understand and know that there are Christian lawyers out here that can help you navigate through some of these uh, sticky issues that people are facing. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be a great time in Nashville at Opryland. That's right. Very cool. That's awesome. We're about out of time. And the best thing we can do is pray with one another for one another and all the stuff that we talked about, people that yeah. listen. And uh, I, again, not to be more sarcastic, but I try to use pronouns twice as much these days. Ladies first, you demand, be the man. First Corinthians 16, 13. 
Be brave. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. And then verse 14, let everything you do be done with love. So I'm even trying to do that with love, just encouraging people to be who God called them to be. So I'm definitely a lady. <laughs> so. That's why I open up the doors for ladies, ladies first. Um, you know, hey, when the ship's going down, it's women and children first. Right. So, yeah. Captain yeah, you got to keep it keep it real around here, Pastor Chuck. People are a little confused these days. For real. We're speaking <laughs> truth and love as best we know how. Trying to bring a little, you know, laughter to it because a little sugar helps the medicine go down. But I would love for you to lead our viewers in prayer. Absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together to be able to take over this one of the seven mountains media, Lord God, to advance your kingdom and and bring forth light in the midst of all the darkness and bring forth salt, Lord God, that would preserve and that would heal and bring forth healing to your people, Lord God. We just thank you for what you're doing in Overcomers TV and even the upcoming trip to Nashville. Father, I pray that this word that went forth will minister to other people to bring forth that healing. Lord, I pray that each of us will begin to walk in love in a new level and help us to understand uh, how much you love us and how we can love one another, Lord God, uh, so that we can be continuously transformed into your image and your likeness. We thank you that you're here in the midst of us um, and that you will continue to go with us throughout the rest of the week. And we honor and bless those that are hearing this broadcast. I pray, Lord God, that something that was said today would begin to move and penetrate their hearts, Lord God, to bring them closer to you um, so that you be lifted up and you would draw them unto you. And we bless you and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for your prayer. You said uh, we can enter this throne room of grace boldly by the blood of the lamb, blood of Jesus. You made us right in your sight by uh, taking our, our trespasses. You said you're not imputing our trespasses against us. You declared us not guilty and justified because you paid the righteous requirement of the law. So we thank you for that amazing grace, your love, your mercy. As we talk about who you are and who we are not yet to be, we know that Paul said, you who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. So thank you, Lord, that you're the potter, we're the clay, we're still on the wheel, and you're molding us and shaping us to be more like your son, Jesus. Have your way in us today, and may you be glorified in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's a good word. It's amazing amen. how fast 30 minutes goes together with you and me. This is awesome. It's, it goes by so fast. <laughs> the best part. Awesome. Best All right. Well, a little shout out to Mike Lindell for sponsoring our show. Yes. And I'm going to do the My Coffee commercial since it's early Friday morning going into the weekend. Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Coffee. It's the best tasting coffee ever. It starts with the beans that are grown in Honduras, which has the perfect climate for growing coffee plants, producing the best beans ever. Each batch is tested to meet the very highest industry standards and all the productions done right here in the USA. You get them ground whole bean or in single serve coffee pods, plus it's certified organic and non-GMO. It's like you're getting that small batch specialty coffee delivered monthly right to your front door. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to save 50% on your My Coffee subscription. Not only that, when you sign up today, you're going to get a Go Anywhere My Pillow absolutely free. You can cancel anytime and keep the Go Anywhere My Pillow as my gift to you. Thanks for supporting my new platform for USA entrepreneurs, My Store.